Hey everybody, this is James Morgan. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, just wanted to uh, do a video today and talk a little bit about uh, guitar players, um, the speed playing on guitar. It seems to be um, uh, like um, a competition or something. It's like um, you see these guitar players uh, posting these uh, shorts uh, on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, and they're just ripping up and down the neck. It's great. They have showing off their technique. Technique is beautiful. Uh, you know, some of them, you, I mean, I couldn't touch some of the uh, technique that some of these uh, players have today. Uh, just amazing. And, uh, uh, you know, so I'm so happy that musicians are spending time uh, shedding, you know, wood shedding, getting their uh, chops together. But um, it's, uh, you know, and then I hear some of these new fusion albums coming out. Uh, if you can call them that, um, so, you know, new albums coming out with some guitar players, uh, new guitar players of the next generation. And the players play so fast. It's almost like they're um, just playing to show off their technique because I'm not getting it. I'm listening to them and I'm not hearing dynamics. I'm not feeling them go anywhere. I don't, I don't hear a story. Um, it's almost like it's just uh, mechanical to me and, and digital. Um, maybe it's a reflection of the digital world we live in now uh, with, uh, you know, everything is uh, a short attention span, um, everything, uh, music, movies, uh, everything is about clips and shorts and, um, you know, 300 uh, words or less. Um, it's uh, it's a different world, that's for sure. But, um, you know, uh, I remember albums like uh, Peter Green, uh, original Fleetwood Mac, one of the, to me, one of the most underrated guitar players in history. And he put out an album called End of the Game, which is one of my favorite albums in the 70s. I listened to that album almost every night in its entirety, sometimes two or three times. And sometimes we'd have listening parties and we'd smoke a joint, sit back and just listen to Peter Green go off. And it was a whole side of a record almost just jamming. And it was amazing just the, the story that he would weave in and out. But it's like, uh, you know, songs are, you know, shorter now. And maybe the guitar players feels they only have a certain amount of time to, you know, get their story their whatever it is they want to say and it's just this ripping and uh, for instance uh frank Gambali, who's one of the most amazing uh musicians uh, he was chick Corea's primary guitarist for dec you know a couple decades now and you know he came up with this sweet technique which is uh you know something he developed and um you know again i watch these guys they're great to watch but there's no um, I, I'm just not getting it, you know. When I used to listen to Holdsworth, Holdsworth would like he would start out kind of doing these uh, kind of stretchy, you know, lingering notes, and then he would build up, and then he would do some legato stuff and build up faster and faster. Then he'd be ripping, he'd go up the neck, and you he was taking you on a journey. And the drums, you know, whoever was the drum uh, with him at that drummer at the time would kind of build with them and the bassist and all that. And you got this incredible story. And that's why he's one of the most iconic, probably the most copied and cloned uh, art, guitarists out there right now, or, you know, before he passed away. But again, you know, it's like uh, the music nowadays doesn't have a lot of changes. It's just like a groove. Guitar player comes in and rips you know, sh shows off his technique. And I'm like, okay, that's great. You have great technique, but I, I didn't tell me anything. And uh, my late friend uh, and producer, Dean Brown, who helped produce my uh, last album, uh, A Soul in Time. Uh, and I'm joined with Gary Husband on drums and keyboards, Adrian uh, Farad on bass. And then I have uh, Eric Marithal on uh, the title song, A Soul in Time. Uh, there's an edited radio version and an extended version. And uh, 
Jean and I would have long talks. Uh, you know, we would have rides back and forth to the studio and even at the studio about the um, way guitar players play now because he taught at a school and he had a lot of students and he was just telling me about how amazing their technique was. Uh, they were just these phenomenal, some of them were just phenomenal. And, uh, but one of the things that we talked about was the lack of stories that people have to tell anymore. And I don't know if it's because of lack of experience, experiences, or, um, you know, they don't know, they're, they're so, uh, spend so much time, and I've talked to Dean about this, I said one time, you know, maybe they spend so much time copying these other players and transcribing their riffs and getting the riffs down that when they comes to telling their own story, they don't have it. And one of the things that he note was noticeable about my playing that he uh, uh, told me was that I don't have the typical blues kind of R&B uh, background uh, or rock feel that a lot of guitar players have that he can hear. And that's one of the things he liked about my guitar playing. He's, he found it refreshing and, and wanted to produce this next record because he felt like my playing wasn't influenced by, it, it was influenced, but it was influenced by the uh, fusion guitar players like Bill Connors, McLaughlin, Al Demiola, Ray Gomez, um, and players of that nature, um, uh, Icarus Johnson, one of my favorites. And um, so uh, those were my influences. And I kind of incorporated those obviously into my style because I used to copy them off records to learn because I'm self-taught and I didn't read, but a lot of these players nowadays, they can read so they can get the transcripts and copy everything note for note and go and do a gig and play it. And, and other guitar players go to watch them and they go, wow, that guy plays like Holzer is so great and this and that. And it's like, yeah, but you know, wouldn't it be more gratifying and more rewarding to have musicians come and see you and say, Wow, that guy told a great story. I never heard anyone play like that. He, he's got his own sound, his own tone. I mean, even uh, Carlos Santana. He, you know him. As soon as he hits the first two couple notes, you know it's Carlos. George Benson. You know, um, uh, there was Eddie Van Halen, Bill Connors. I mean, all these people. You can just go back and you can say, oh yeah, I, you know, I got that tone. It was great. You know, there that that was their sound. But there's not a lot of guitar players, even uh, um, uh, Mancuso, Matteo Mancuso, great guitar player, excellent, you know, uh, technique is flawless, um, you know, did a, a video with him and uh, Demiola and, uh, you know, some great playing, but he has still yet to put out a full album. I know he does singles here and there, but a full album of just some work that sounds like him not him playing like Holdsworth or, you know, doing Spain again. If I have to hear that song again, it's like, you know, I couldn't play it. And there's, and there's certain kinds of jazz I could never play. And those guys play it. That's great. And let, and let them play it. But, you know, be, for me, being self-taught and by default, I created my own style of music and my own, you know, way of playing and I think, uh, you know, musicians nowadays, speed has become such a huge part of um, their arsenal. And for me, I just, you know, I like sustain. I like some space in between. I mean, if you listen to um, even Carlos Santana, will hold a note, you know, let it sustain and drop. You know, there's just that silence in between the notes to me like Miles Davis, the way he played the trumpet, he wasn't ripping all the time. He would hit some tones, let it ring out, let the other band kind of come in a little bit, you know, uh, let it be about the band, you know? Um, so I just think, uh, I'm just wondering what's with the speed, everyone having to play fast, uh, you know, ripping up and down the neck. It just, it, for me, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, that's great. You can play as fast as Mom Steen or whoever. But um, again, it's just, it's almost like it's just about impressing. And I think the TikTok generation, the whole Instagram generation, everything is about uh, making an impression so you get clicks 
and you get subscribers and you get followers. And, you know, so if I play really fast and, you know, they sat there for like 20 times until they got it perfect. Whereas if you just go to a club and you hear some jazz musicians playing or rock or some, you know, players that are really good and they just jam and maybe they hit some notes off or they don't play fast, really clean. And so what if they're artists, you know? So I'm just wondering what's with all the speed? Why does everyone have to play fast? I mean, someone tell me, put your comments down below. Uh, let me know why you think it's important to play fast or if you think it isn't important to play fast all the time. And, and what are your thoughts on it? But um, for me, I just say, what's with having to play a million miles an hour? Doesn't It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it has its place maybe at the peak of a solo, but you know, constantly, it's like, you know, it kind of wears on you after a while for me. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Uh, just observations, not criticisms. Again, just my thoughts. Wonder what your thoughts are on the subject. And uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more videos like this. And uh, if you want to uh, check out the new album, A Soul in Time with Gary Husband, Adrian Farad, and myself, you can go to Bandcamp, type in uh, Morgan Hadrian Farad soul in time and then i'll put a link down below the video and uh if you do buy the album on bandcamp you actually get a free download of the last album i did with the uh, legendary guitarist steve brown uh called uh groove and smooth and it's on guitar one record same uh, record label as uh, this album and it's uh, uh all original songs that dean and i wrote together some of them and, and melodies and uh, i think you'll enjoy it but you get a free download when you buy the physical CD or the digital download of A Soul in Time. All right, uh, leave your comments and uh, stay tuned for uh, more videos coming up soon.